Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Sellis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saturday, the 20th of March, 2021, in the fourth week in Lent. Our Daily Prayer Lord Jesus, your gospel brings joy and freedom. May I be loyal to you always, even though it produces a cross on earth, that I may share in your crown of victory for all eternity. Amen. Magnificat Daily Scripture But first, an overview. Genuine holiness is a consequence of heeding the voice of God who speaks in our hearts. The guards refrain from bringing Jesus to the chief priests and Pharisees because they listened to his words and were moved. Nicodemus pleads with the Pharisees that they hear Christ and find out what he is doing before condemning him. Elsewhere, St. Paul attests that faith comes from hearing. Romans 10:17. Blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. In our reading, we are told, I am like a trusting lamb led to slaughter. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 11, verse 18. I knew their plot because the Lord informed me. At that time you, O Lord, showed me their doings. Yet I, like a trusting lamb led to slaughter, had not realized that they were hatching plots against me. Let us destroy the tree in its vigor. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will be spoken no more. But you, O Lord of hosts, O just judge, searcher of mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 7 O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and rescue me, lest I become like the lion's prey to be torn to pieces with no one to rescue me. Do me justice, O Lord, because I am just, and because of the innocence that is mine. Let the malice of the wicked come to an end, but sustain the just, O searcher of heart and soul, O just God. A shield before me is God, who saves the upright of heart. A just judge is God, a God who punishes day by day. O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. Verse Before the Gospel Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. In our Gospel, The Christ will not come from Galilee, will he? A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John chapter 7, verse 40. Some in the crowd who heard these words of Jesus said, This is truly the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But others said, The Christ will not come from Galilee, will he? Does not Scripture say that the Christ will be of David's family and come from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? So a division occurred in the crowd because of him. Some of them even wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. So the guards went to the chief priests and Pharisees who asked them, Why did you not bring him? 
The guards answered, Never before has anyone spoken like this man. So the Pharisees answered them, Have you also been deceived? Have any of the authorities or the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd which does not know the law is accursed. Nicodemus, one of their members, who had come to him earlier, said to them, Does our law condemn a man before it first hears him and finds out what he is doing? They answered and said to him, You are not from Galilee also, are you? Look and see that no prophet arises from Galilee. Then each went to his own house. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magnificat Meditation of the Day is entitled He Speaks Like None Other and is written by Sister Marie of the Sacred Heart. The dreamed of spring is the heart of Jesus, the bubbling fountain where we'll be able to drink long draughts in an endless ecstasy is the homeland. It is heaven. Here below the cross, here below the exile, the arid desert. Doesn't the child Jesus on his straw say this to his darling little fiancé? What did he come looking for in this world where he was so little loved after having loved so much? A cross to die on. Dear child, never shall we suffer as much as Jesus did. Never shall we know as he did the garden of the agony. He does give us a few drops of his chalice, but he reserves for himself all the gall. Ah, the language of Jesus is not in any way the language of earthly bridegrooms. Sometimes it is silence on the most beautiful days. One would say that he wants to hide. Why? It is the alone who knows the ravishing mysteries of the other life and what treasures of graces, what precious diamonds he is amassing for his spouses when he will call them to the eternal banquet. It is for this reason that he often says nothing to us here below. It is for this reason that he keeps silent. This short moment of life will pass so quickly and the real day of the nuptials will be so beautiful that Jesus does not think twice with us before sending us suffering. He hungers and thirsts for this so as to crown us better. Let the little lamb fall asleep in the heart of its little Jesus and let her, until heaven comes, remain his dear little toy among all others. Sister Marie of the Sacred Heart was the oldest sister of Saint Therese of Lesseur and a Carmelite nun in the same convent. Daily Bible verse entitled why is Jesus still a cause of division? Quote, so a division occurred in the crowd because of him, Jesus. Unquote. John 7:43. As Jesus embarks in his public ministry, dissension and division about him grew among the people. No surprise at all because Simeon prophesied this to Mary and Joseph in the temple during the presentation of Jesus. Quote, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. Unquote. Luke 2.34 Jesus was born to be a sign of contradiction, 
This is true while he was walking the muddy terrain of Galilee, as it is today, two thousand years after he ascended into heaven. Let us consider the cause of dissensions about Jesus in 2021. The first cause is ignorance. The dissenters in the days of Jesus could have easily learned that Jesus was born in Bethlehem and not in Nazareth. They did not care to find out. Ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Jesus. St. Jerome The second cause Today, people can look at the religious terrain in Christianity and ask, Did Jesus truly found 60,000 churches? They don't ask because they are comfortable with the present arrangement. Cause number three. The doctrine of Jesus is too harsh and restrictive. Why can't people destroy babies in the womb if they choose to or marry whoever they wish? The fourth cause. Who is this Jesus to tell us how to live our lives? Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted, proclaims prophecy. The day of reckoning is coming. It came for the Jews in 70 AD. It will come for everyone sooner than later. Laudate, Reflections and Actionable Challenges from our Scriptural Readings with Lenten Bonus Introductory Prayer Christ, you are the most open-spirited person in history. You are open to all who sincerely seek you. So I seek you now, Lord. Through this meditation, I hunger for your friendship and grace. I love you. But I long for my love to grow so that I can be ever closer to you and more and more like you. Amen. Our petition for the next three challenges. Lord, open my heart to you who are truth itself. Our first challenge. The openness and sincerity are convincing. Just some moments prior, Christ has spoken of himself as living water, John 7:38, and some in the crowd react much the same way as did the Samaritan woman at the well. At first, they thought of him as a prophet, but now they begin to believe that he is the Messiah. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me. John 6, 37 Even the temple guards could not bring themselves to arrest him, so compelling were his words. Christ tells his apostles not to prepare any words in their defense when they are dragged before judges and magistrates. Mark 13.11 Living in the truth is our best preparation for communicating it in a compelling way. Our second challenge, willful blindness. The leaders, however, as Nicodemus points out, are not even willing to encounter Christ and hear him out. Their obstinacy leads them to error. Quote, Look and see that no prophet arises from Galilee. Unquote. What about Jonah and Hosea? It also leads them to malice. They are not even willing to give Jesus the benefit of the doubt that he simply might have been delusional about his identity. Instead, Pushed by jealousy, they have already made up their minds to accuse him of willful deception. Do I knowingly and willingly shy away from the truth, any truth? Do I realize where this could and will lead me? 
Our third challenge. The truth will set you free. The truth is often difficult to swallow, in particular, the truth about Christ in relation to my life. He is my Lord. He is my Redeemer. He deserves my all. Seems somehow fanatic, irrational, and unnatural in a world which values technological progress, political correctness, and looking out for number one. But Christians, worthy of the name, in all centuries and in all walks of life, have discovered that believing in the person of Jesus Christ, who meant every word he said, is an experience of real freedom. It is a freedom from the dead-end world of materialism, sin, and death. It is a freedom to live a life of love, truly human and divine, a love like Christ's love for me, up to death on a cross. Our Conversation with Christ Lord, no one has ever spoken like you. You have given us your word in the Gospels. I realize that I need to have much more frequent contact with your words so as to free me from my blindness. Let my understanding of your word never serve me as an occasion of vain glory or arrogance, rather as a tool to help others come to know you better. Our Resolution I will break down a prejudice that I still harbor in my heart against some aspect of Christ's message. Our Meditation When resistance and opposition to God's Word rears its head, how do you respond? With fear and doubt? Or with faith and courage? The prophet Jeremiah was opposed by his own people because the word he spoke in God's name did not sit right with them. They plotted to silence him and to cut him off from the land of the living. Jeremiah 11.19 Jeremiah responded with meekness and prophetic insight, like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. Jeremiah 11. 18. Are you willing to take a stand for the Lord Jesus? No one can be indifferent for long when confronted with Jesus and his claim to be the Messiah and Savior of the world. Jesus' message and the miraculous signs he performed caused division for many in Israel. Some believed he was a prophet some the Messiah, and some believed he was neither. The reaction of the armed officers was bewildered amazement. They went to arrest him and returned empty-handed because they never heard anyone speak as he did. The reaction of the chief priests and Pharisees was contempt. The reaction of Nicodemus was timid. His heart told him to defend Jesus, but his head told him not to take the risk. Who is Jesus for you? And are you ready to give him your full allegiance? There will often come a time when we have to take a stand for the Lord Jesus and for the truth of the gospel, the good news of God's kingdom, and the free gift of salvation which Jesus came to bring us. To stand for Jesus and his kingdom may provoke mockery and opposition. It may even entail suffering and hardship, such as the loss of job, reputation, or life. The Lord Jesus richly rewards those who suffer for his name's sake. Costly grace versus cheap grace. 
There are fundamentally only two choices that determine the course of our lives and the final destiny that awaits us. The choice to live for God's kingdom of peace, joy, and righteousness, or the pursuit of the world's kingdom, which stands in opposition to God's authority and commandments. We can choose to obey God's word and believe in His promise of blessing, or we can choose to follow the voice of those who promise success and happiness apart from God's truth and laws. The costly grace and freedom which the Lord Jesus offers to those who embrace the cross for His sake leads to joy and blessing in this life as well as the promise of eternal happiness with God. Cheap grace, which tries to bypass the cross for the sake of being my own master and the ruler of my own destiny, leads to emptiness and endless futility. Who do you choose to be the master and ruler of your life and destiny? Lord Jesus, your Gospels bring joy and freedom. May I be loyal to you always, even though it produces a cross on earth, that I may share in your crown of victory for all eternity. Amen. Further Reflection The Avenger of Blood Numbers 35-12 Quote let me witness the vengeance you take on them. Unquote. Jeremiah 11:20. The people to whom Jeremiah prophesied were treacherously planning to kill him. Jeremiah 11:19. Jeremiah risked his neck to serve God, and he wanted God to back him up by taking vengeance on these enemies. In addition, Jeremiah wanted to see it personally. We Christians have enemies also. Unlike Jeremiah, we do get to witness the vengeance God takes on them. We see Jesus destroying the devil's works, 1 John 3, 8. The pride of the powerful crushed as they gaze upon Jesus crucified. Isaiah 52:15 Sinners emerging from the confessional with tears of repentance and gratitude as Jesus in his vengeance robs Satan of still more of his former captives Colossians 2:15 God commands in his word Beloved do not avenge yourselves Leave that to me. Vengeance is mine, I will repay. Romans 12, 19 Yet we can have a role. God's word tells us, If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. By doing this, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Romans 12:20 God is perfectly just. 1 Corinthians 1:30 and Isaiah 30:18 He is able to punish the wicked until they are forced to choose for him or against him. 2 Peter 2:9 He can avenge by acting in justice or avenge through mercy. Let's do our part as God's agents so his enemies and ours receive the right kind of vengeance from God. Romans 12:20. Our prayer. Father, may the burning coals of kindness I pour on my enemies melt their hearts and lead them to you. God's promise to us. No man ever spoke like that before. John 
seven forty six. Meditation from the Lenten Bonus is entitled Deeper Than the Divide is a reflection based on John seven forty and was written by Father Richard Veras. Last year, in the space of a week, I attended two lectures given by different religious sisters. One works with women with unplanned pregnancies and women seeking healing from abortion, and another works to give aid and hospitality to Central Americans seeking asylum in the United States. The issues that each of them face often divide people according to politics and ideology. But neither sister spoke from ideology. Instead, each witness to her love for each person she served, made in the image of God. Their very concrete concerns were infinitely deeper than ideology. When one was asked about possible political action, her first response was, Go to Mass every day. The other spoke of her powerlessness to change circumstances and her hope, grounded in depending on Christ's presence in every aspect of her mission. Engaged in seemingly different work, they were witnessing to the same Lord and thus, they both spoke with an undeniable authority. While the crowd in today's gospel was divided over where Jesus came from and how they should interpret or spin his identity, the guards are simpler, truer, and more profound when they say, Never before has anyone spoken like this man. Nicodemus also sees something deeper than the arguments and divisions. May we sacrifice our own preconceptions in order to encounter Christ with simplicity of heart and poverty of spirit. Merciful Father, Heal our divided hearts and give us the simple hearts of children that in our poverty we may begin to see you as you are. Today's Suggested Penance Pray in a special way to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Thomas A. Kempis quote from the Imitation of Christ. Many are his visits to the man of interior life, and sweet the conversation that he holdeth with him. Plenteous his consolations, his peace, and his familiarity. Come then, faithful soul, make thy heart ready for this spouse, so that he may vouch safe to come to thee, and to dwell within thee. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May His peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.